Hey everyone and welcome to a new tutorial. Today we're going to be recreating the Briars of Sin from Elden Ring. The spell has three different particles, the ground blood, a expanding shockwave and then the binds that surround the player. Let's get right into it. First particle system we will do is the twigs or binds. For this we need to create a new 3D model. There will be a link in the description down below for you to download this model. I will show you how I model this in case you are thinking about creating your own custom binds. Select all objects in your scene and delete them. Add a new curve, curve spirals, torus. If you go on top view you will notice that it is tilted to the right. Go down here to curve spirals and set the inner radius to 0. Now it is centered. Set its radius to 2, hyper cycle to 4. You can see now that we got our little spiral going, but we don't need it to go all the way around, only halfway. Set the number of cycles to 0.52. Perfect. Switch over to object mode and go down here to these settings. Under geometry, change its depth to 0.03. You can see its thickness growth. Let me switch over to wireframe view so that you can see we have a lot of faces. This isn't ideal for visual effects. Change its resolution to zero and now should be better. Always keep performance in mind when creating assets. Let's give it some spikes. Add a cone. Set its vertices to three. Lower its depth and radius to something very low. With this new spike selected, go into edit mode and move it up so that it is just above the x-axis. Let's place it along our curve now. Add an array modifier. This will allow us to place lots of the same object. Add a curve modifier, then select your spiral and you will see it gets placed right on the curve. Perfect. Under your array settings, change its x-factor so that they fit nicely along the curve. Duplicate your cone, then switch over to edit mode and rotate it a little bit like this. Make sure that the bottom of the spike it is at its center. Return to object mode and you will see the spikes facing on a different direction now. But they are all placed too evenly, so let's go to the array settings of this one, lower the count and its x factor. Let's repeat this process one last time, so duplicate it, rotate it, move it to the center, change its count, and X factor. Okay, it's looking pretty nice. The spiral needs to be pointing more upwards at the very end though. Select the spiral and then grab the last vertices to move them up like this. Okay, much better. Apply the array first, then the curve to all the spikes. Select the spiral, right click on it and convert it to a mesh. Select all of them, then press Ctrl J to join them into one mesh. Okay, um, select all the last four vertices and merge them at the center so that they have a pointy end. We're almost done. Duplicate it. Jump into edit mode, then go up here and enable proportional editing. Now simply select one face and move it on any direction you want. Let's do this one last time. Okay, nice. Select all three of them, then join them together by pressing Ctrl J. Go into edit mode and select all of them. Switch to top view, then up here select 3D cursor. Duplicate the mesh and disable proportional editing. Now we can just rotate it around the center so that we have this very nice vines twisting around a pivot point. 
Last thing we have to do is make sure its UVs are correct so that we can fade it in and out using a shader. Go to UV editing and if you select the bottom faces, you will notice that they are located on the left side here. If you select the top ones, they are on the right. So naturally, all we really have to do is simply select all of the curves by pressing L while hovering over them and rotating them 90 degrees while holding control. Make sure you hold control so that they rotate exactly 90 degrees. Go over to select and invert the selection so that we have all the spikes now. Press 1 to go into from view and then U to unwrap it and pick project from view. Great, select all of them inside the UV editing window and scale them up to fit this screen. And we're all done here. Simply export this as an FBX file and let's open up Unity now. Here we are in a very empty project. We have a directional light, ground plane, camera, and my project folder containing a ground plane material, URP settings, and the scene we have currently opened. Let's begin by importing our model. Under its import settings, uncheck convert units. Create a new lead shader graph. Name it bind bane shader, then open it. This shader is going to be super simple. Add a vertex color and connect it to the base color so that we can control this using the particle system. Add a UV0 and split it. We only want to grab the green value and subtract from it. You see, if I change this value, it goes up and down. But we're not going to control this inside the shader, we wanted to do it through the particle system. Add a UV1 in this case and split it. Plug in the R value into your subtract node. Add a step node so that it, it turns into a solid line. Open up your shader graph inspector and under its surface type, set it to transparent. Plug the step into the alpha. Last thing we will do is create two floats. Smoothness and metallic, then plug them into their respective place. That is pretty much it for the shader. Save it, then let's create this particle system. Name it Briars of Sin. Reset its transform so that it is on the center of the map. Right click on the new shader and create a new material from it. Name it Vine Material and enable GPU instancing for optimization purposes. Select the particle system and set its start speed to zero then uncheck shape so that they all appear at the center. Scroll down to render settings and change the render mode to mesh. Set it to be the model we just created. You will notice if you move around the model, it rotates to face the camera. We don't want that. Set its render alignment to local, then up here, check 3D start rotation. Minus 90 on the X axis will place it perfectly on the ground. For more randomness, set it to be a random between two constants and add a 360 to one of the Y values. They are all spanning with a random Y rotation now. Remove its rate over time and add a burst of 5 particles. Assign its material to be the material we created and this will allow you to go up here and set its color to whatever you want. I'll do red. You will notice that at the very end, the mesh does not look quite right. That is because we need to check custom vertex streams and add a custom pass. It will disappear now. Enable custom data, move to vector, and if you change the set value, you will see it appear. Nice, set this to a curve. For this curve, we will need to add two new keyframes by double clicking near the end and near the start then right click on 1 and select edit key. I will set its time to be 0.1 and value to 1. This will make it fade in. For the second to last one, I will do 1 to value and 0.9 to time. Play the particle system and it should be working just how we want it to. I will lower its duration and lifetime to 3 seconds, so that it is a bit faster.
Don't forget to disable looping. All right, let's do the ground load now. Import these two textures files. There will be a link in the description down below for you to download. One is a 2x2 two two tile of blood splatter and the other is a normal map to make the blood look a bit more bubbly. Set the normal map to be a normal map on the import settings and the blood splatter check alpha is transparency. Create a new particle system named ground blood. Reset its transform. Start speed to zero. Shape to a circle and the X rotation to 90 degrees so that they appear on the ground. Let's assign a material to it, so create a new material called blood material and change its shader to be the particle late shader. Surface tab to transparent and drag the blood tiles to the base map and normal map to... Yes, you guessed it, the normal map. Drag our new material to the ground blood particle system and you will notice that all four blood splatters can be seen. We do not want that. We want to randomize between each one of these four tiles. Enable texture sheet animation and set its X and Y to 2. Under the start frame, change it to a random between two constants. Second value should be over 3.9. And cycle should be the smallest possible. Now we are cycling through each blood splatter. But they are all facing the camera so change its render alignment to local. And go up here again and set its X value to minus 90 this time. Let me move it up a bit so that they do not clip through the ground. Let's randomize its Y rotation as well. Under emission settings add a burst of 30 particles. Let's change its color. I will do red. Enable color over lifetime and make it fade in and out. I'm going to lower its duration and lifetime to 3 seconds so that it fits the other particle system. Drag it inside the briars of sin and let's check it out. Okay, the model is way too big so I will set its start size to half its value. One more thing you will notice is that the blood is being rendered in front. Select the Briars of Sin particle system and scroll down to render settings. Change the certain fudge to any value below 0. I will do minus 5 and that should fix it. Oh, don't forget to disable looping to your crown blood. It's looking quite nice, we only need one last particle system. Import this texture, there will be a link in the description down below for you to download it. Set alpha is transparency. Create a new material for it and this one will use a particle unlit shader. Create a new particle system and call it world. Reset its transform and let's move it up a bit so that we can see it better. Duration and lifetime to 4 seconds. Start speed to 0. Start size to something big like 3. Increase its simulation speed to 3 as well. Under emission, I will set its rate over time to 2. Uncheck shape. Assign its material to it. Change the render alignment to local again and repeat the same thing we did for the other particle systems. For color, I will do a red, but also change its alpha value to something very low so that it is a bit transparent. Disable looping. Enable color over lifetime and make it fade out. Enable size over lifetime and make sure you have a curve going up. If you hit play now, we have this very nice world effect. One more thing we can add to this effect is rotation over lifetime. I will do minus 45. Nice. Okay, make it a child of our Briars of Sin. 
and position it where you think it fits best and we are pretty much done. You can of course change any of its values to better fit your game. Maybe increase its duration or the world size, I don't know, go mess around with it. That is it for this tutorial, I hope this was useful for you guys. I want to thank all my patrons for making this video possible and thank you for watching. See you in the next video.